So we have a lucky winner, and when I hit 300 subscribers, I'm giving away this Eliwick Tumblestrom deck to our winner. Let's go over what's in it today, and tell me what you think, because I think there might still be room for improvement. Hello, Oathbreakers. I'm just going to get right into the deck today. I'm trying something new with my recording software, so if you notice anything strange, let me know. As always, there's going to be ways you can support the channel in the upper left-hand corner. Today's deck tech is an Oathbreaker deck for Ellie Wick Tumblestrom. She costs 2 and 2 green and has the following abilities as a 4 mana planeswalker. If we plus 1 her, we venture into the dungeon, which is the main mechanic our winner wanted me to focus on. If we minus 2 her... We look at the top six cards of our library, and we may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into our hand. If it's legendary, we also gain three life, and we put the rest on the bottom of our library in the random order. I've actually chalked this deck full of legends just for that reason. And our minus seven is we get an emblem with creatures we control have trample, haste, and plus two plus two for each differently named dungeon we've completed. And that one's going to be a little hard, but we're going to try for it anyway. Nope. Wouldn't you know? There we go. Doesn't always work. Our signature spell today is you find a cursed idol. For one in a green, we get to choose to either smash it, which is to destroy an artifact, lift a curse, or dis which destroys target enchantment, or steal its eyes, which creates a treasure token, and we venture into the dungeon. This is going to help us venture a little bit more frequently, since it can be uh, hard to do with so few venture cards in mono green. Something important to note here is the idol they're trying to steal the eyes of is a callback to the original D&D &D book. So if you look back at the old Advanced Dungeons and Dragons book, it actually has an adventuring party in front of this idol. Our first card in the deck is Allosaurus Rider for five and two green. He says you may exile two green cards from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. It has power and toughness equal, each equal to one plus the number of lands you control. Lands are a sub-theme in this deck because there are, some of our Venture into the Dungeon stuff cares when lands enter the battlefield, so I decided to lean into that a little bit as well. Arashi, the Sky Asunder for 3 and 2 green, is a 5-5 five, five Legendary Creature Spirit. If we pay X on green and tap it, it deals X damage to target creature with flying, which is good removal. If we pay X and 2 green and discard it, we can deal X damage to each creature with flying, so this is one of our removal cards. We have Artista of the Endless Web for 2 and 2 green. She's a legendary 3-5 spider with reach. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, we create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. Next, we have Beanstalker Giant. For 6 and a green, he's going to have power and toughness each equal to the lands we control. And for 2 and a green, we search our library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield and then shuffle so that land does enter the battlefield untapped which is important we have burnished heart for three if we pay three and sacrifice burnished heart we can search our library for two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle halana kasek ranger for three in a green is a legendary human archer that's three four with reach whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control we may pay two when we do, that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature, and she has partner, which we're not going to make use of. Now, this is another removal spell in the deck, so do keep that in mind. Hu Tao, Honored Physician, for 1 in 2 green is a 1-2 that says tap, put target creature card from our graveyard on top of our library, activate this ability only during our turn before attack attackers are declared. What we can do with Hu Tao if I'm, I'm sorry, I'm certain I'm mispronouncing that, is we can have a legend in our graveyard, put it back on top of our library, and Ellie Wick will find it for us using her ability so we can guarantee that three life gain if we're in a tight spot. Intrepid Outlander for one in a green is a 2-3 with reach and pack tactics. Whenever it attacks, if we attack with creatures with total power six or greater this combat, we get to venture into the dungeon. Kuvari. God of Kinship for 2 and 2 green is a 2-4. As long as we control 3 or more legendary creatures, she gets plus 4, plus 2, and Vigilance. If we pay 1 in green, we can look at the top 6 cards of our library. We may reveal a legendary card from among them and put it into a hand. We put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. 
and she turns into, or I guess you can instead play the backside, which is the ring heart crest for one in the green. When enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. We can tap and add X green mana, um, and we can spend this mana only to cast creature spells of the chosen type. Since we're playing a lot of legends, our creature types are a little spread out, but elf is probably the best choice given what we have. Okay. Next we have Cubris, Harvest Celebrant. For X and two green, enters the battlefield with an amount of 1-1 one -one counters on it equal to the mana spent to cast it. So it's going to get at least two if you spend zero for X. We can remove 1-1 one -one counters from Cubris to prevent all combat damage. I'm sorry, all damage that would be dealt this turn to another target creature with a 1-1 one -one counter on it. Did that not go? Sorry, my system doesn't always obey me. Next, we have Old Growth Trowel for three green. It's a 4-4 Trample. When it dies, if it was a creature at the time, we return to the battlefield as an Aura Enchantment with Enchant Forest we control. The Enchant Forest will have tap add two green mana and pay one and tap it, sacrifice this land, create a tapped 4-4 green troll warrior creature token with Trample. So it's another good way to ramp us and it cares about our lands. Next, we have Renata, called to the hunt for two and two green. She is an X3 creature. Her power is equal to our devotion to green. Each other creature we control will enter the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one -one counter on it. You can probably see how this combos with the earlier card. Next, we have Shigeki, Jukai Visionary. For one and a green, it's a legendary enchantment creature, Snake Druid. It's a 1-3 with pay one and a green and tap. Return Shigeki Jukai Visionary to its owner's hand. Reveal the top four cards of our library. We may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped, and we put the rest in our graveyard. Or we can channel Shigeki for X, X, and two green. We discard it and return X non-legendary cards from our graveyard to our hand. There probably will be some options like the old growth troll. Titana, Protector of Argoth for three and two green says... When she enters the battlefield, return target land from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from battlefield, put a 5-3 green elemental creature token into play. Next, we have Traxos, Scourge of Krog. For four, it's a legendary artifact creature construct 7-7 seven, seven with trample that enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during our untap step. Whenever we cast a historic spell, we untap it. Since we are running some other artifacts and we're also running plenty of legendary creatures, we'll probably get to do that pretty often. Vidris of the Silver Moon Ranger, uh, Silvery Moon Ranger for one and two green is a human elf ranger legendary creature 3-3 three, three with reach and ward. Whenever we cast a creature or planeswalker spell, we venture, venture into the dungeon. So this is one of our good venture cards. This ability triggers only once each turn. Whenever we complete a dungeon, we create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. Wandering Troubadour for 3 and a green says at the beginning of our end step, if we had a land enter the battlefield under our control this turn, we venture into the dungeon and it's a 4-3, 4-2, sorry. We have Yodora, Grave Gardener for 4 and a green, is a legendary creature tree fork druid and it's a 5-5. Whenever a non-token creature we control dies, we may return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control, and it is a forest land. Animus Awakening for X and a green. I have a hard time. I actually have thought a couple times about running this card as the deck signature spell. Reveal the top X cards of our library, and we put all land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped. And the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. If there are two more instants and sorcery cards in our graveyards, we then get to untap those lands. Kamal's Druidic Vow for X and two green is a legendary sorcery. Um, we look at the top X cards of our library. You may put any number of lands or legendary permanent cards with mana value extra less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest in your graveyards. So this combo works real well with all our other legendary creatures in our deck. Uh, Haro, that's a sack of land to go get two basic lands and put them on the battlefield untapped and then shuffle our library. Rolling Regrowth, let's a sacrifice land and we search for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle our library, so slightly different. Black Blade Reforged costs two. 
we equip it to a legendary creature, which we have a bunch of options for. It only costs us three to equip, otherwise it's seven. The equipped creature is going to get plus one, plus one for each land we control, which can be massive. Heroes Podium says each legendary creature we control gets plus one, plus one for each other legendary creature we control. If we pay X and tap it, we can look at the top X cards of our library. We may reveal a legendary creature card from among them and put it into our hand, and we put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. We have the Weatherlight for four. It is a flying four, five vehicle that crews for three. When it deals combat damage to a player, we look at the top five cards of our library. We may reveal a historic card from among them and put it into our hand. We put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. That's going to get us most likely legendary creature, but we do have some other artifacts in the deck. Asusa's Many Journeys is one of our historical permanents that's not an artifact or a legendary creature. For one in a green, it enters the battlefield. We put a lore counter on it. We may play an additional land. The second lore counter, we gain through life. And on the third, we exile and return it to the battlefield transformed as... Likeness of the Seeker. It's a 3-3. When it becomes blocked, we untap up to three lands we control, which works really well with the rest of our plan. Next, we have Boseju Reach to Skyward for three and a green. On one, we search our library for two basic forest cards, reveal them, put them into our hand, and then shuffle. On two, we can put one land card from our graveyard onto the top of our library. On three, we exile the Saga and return to the battlefield transformed is Branch of Buseju. It's a 0-0 uh, zero, zero with reach plant creature, and it gets plus one, plus one for each other land we control. We have Find Path for two and a green. It enchants a land when enters the battlefield. We venture into the dungeon, and then that enchanted land will tap for two green mana moving forward. Why did it stop doing that? Let's see. Mending of Dominaria for three and two green lets us mill two cards and then return a creature card from among them from our graveyard to our hand. It does that twice. Then on the third um, saga number, it lets us return all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield and then shuffle our graveyard into our library. This is great for getting back cards we've lost, but it's also great for massive ramp because those lands enter the battlefield untapped. Dungeon Descent. We can tap it for a colorless, or we can pay four and tap it and tap an, an untapped legendary creature we control to venture into the dungeon. We can only do this during our turn, but this is another way to venture. It is a little expensive, so it works well with all the other ramp we have in the deck. Evolving Wilds can be tapped to sack and search for basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped. We do have some things that care about when lands go to our graveyard, and some things that will return lands from our graveyard. This is a great target for that. Uh, we're running some forests. Myriad Landscape. It comes in play tapped. We can tap it for a colorless, or we can pay two and sacrifice it. Search for life for Bray for two basic land cards that share a land type and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. We've got Terramorphic Expanse, and that should be it. That is the entire deck. I would love to hear what you guys have to think about that. If you could let me know, I'd really appreciate it. I'm kind of in the tunnel on this one because I've looked at it so many times. Certainly, I would like my winner to reach out to me either below in the comments or on Twitter or in the Discord because right now I kind of have the deck built, but I don't really have it. I can't ship it if I don't know where it needs to go, and I don't want to order it until I know where I'm sending it. So if you could get with me. Um, other than that, you know, on screen here, I've got my other subscribers below. I've got my Patreons here. And, you know, I'll put up a video if you guys have anything else you want to tell me. I appreciate it. But other than that, thank you for stopping by.